Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Silicon Angle Studios of the Cube here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, your host. We are in studio for our conversation with Kevin Eckeroyd, who's the CEO of Cision, formerly with Oracle Marketing Cloud, recently took the job of CEO of Cision. Congratulations. Thanks, John. Great to see you. Thanks for coming in on the holidays, kind of winding down the year. What a year it's been. Trump's meeting with tech leaders, <laughs> you know, having them kiss the ring, get the trillion dollars offshore right. on site, advertising is upside down. Data is the hottest thing on the planet. Yep. You're in the center of the action. Certainly at Oracle, we had yeah. multiple conversations, but now you're leading a company. Yeah, so, so Kevin Aykroyd leaving Oracle Marketing Cloud around <laughs> Cision, that's that's way down the chart <laughs> and all this change, right? No big deal. Well, we're at, well, as you know, we're always out front of the trends, but the marketing uh, concepts have, have been around in yep. businesses since in the centuries, since, since business was around. But now with data, as we talked, it's changing. So the biggest trend that we see happening is that marketing isn't just a marketing thing. It's a company-wide data opportunity. So it's certainly changing a lot of the game. And I know we've talked about that. So, you know, what's the what's the change? Why did you uh, decide to take the CEO opportunity at Cision? Was the company, did it, uh, what attracted you to these guys? Yeah, th thanks for asking. And, and good to be here, by the way. Uh, uh, I've been here with you a fair amount. Uh, this is the first time I'm not wearing my Oracle Marketing Cloud uniform, so <laughs> good to be seeing yeah. you in a second uniform, right? How does the how does the blue and uh, orange Cision uniform look, John? Do I look okay? You look like you've been working hard. All so right, you've good. been kicking ass and taking names. Good. Well, you got to grow. You're now the That's chief right. executive. You, everything yeah. stops with you. Yeah. Well, well, and just to be really clear, because I know that my name with you guys, especially, has been synonymous with Oracle Marketing Cloud. I I started it. I did all the acquisitions. I grew it. You know, it was kind of my baby. Uh, I didn't leave because there was anything wrong. I think Oracle Marketing Cloud is going to continue to just absolutely kick ass and take names. I think they've built the right mousetrap. You know, as you've heard me, they didn't yeah. they didn't start from CRM and go backward. Yeah. They didn't start from the website and go out. They started with data, right? Data logics, Crosswise, add this. Uh, the first big D, you know DMP yeah. and data marketplace. I think their data driven you know strategy is going to continue to see them just absolutely survive. Uh, after me, and I sure yeah. hope so, because uh, uh, well, they're set up to win. Name. I mean, you, the integrations are always a challenge, and I think our last interview at the Mar Modern Marketing Experience, great show. Yeah, we talked about that specific thing where you want to be vertically specialized, but yet horizontally integrated, and, and you set that up. And and I think I and they are, yeah, right well, uh, have have set that up, so they're poised really well to succeed. So uh, I didn't leave Oracle because of any lack of faith in their ability to go conquer that very big opportunity or any personal dissatisfaction. Um, it was probably the best job I've ever had in my career. Uh, this is one of those classic cases where I saw an opportunity that was so good, <laughs> I had to leave something that I that I loved. Uh, so for everybody that's listening, I'll just say that again. Kevin didn't leave Oracle because there was anything wrong. Kevin left Oracle because of what I'm about to riff on now. Yeah. It was this big opportunity. And basically, John, I'll, we, we, can, we can go as deep as you'd like to in today's interview, but at the highest level, this big opportunity that I saw is you just look at the data driven and then you know data meets content meets applications meets media the channels come together right the life cycles you look at everything that's happened and it's easy to kind of now say well just go look at what salesforce marketing cloud and adobe marketing cloud and oracle marketing cloud right look at that billions and billions and billions and billions of acquisition look how fast and far that's come and basically look at the needs that drove that m that massive convergence um, and it has fundamentally changed the industry it's fundamentally changed the chief media the chief marketing the chief commerce officers ability to go drive results that, that they couldn't have done without Salesforce Adobe and Oracle doing what we did right but all of that has been done at paid media right the advertising at commerce yeah. and at own media right our websites or our mobile mm -hmm. applications none of that through with all the tech giants in the industry and of the 20 billion dollars in uh m a capital opex and capex since then none of it's touched the third leg of this stool which is earned media mm -hmm. right earned media communications good old-fashioned pr the exact same need for that data technology and measurement transformation that sales and service and commerce and paid media, you know, yeah. and owned, they've all been through that. This mission critical part called communications or in media yeah. has not been through it. As we were building this, um, my private equity company, GTCR, has very quick, quietly over the last two years put together six leading solution providers in this earned media communications world, 
um, just like I put Eloqua yeah. and Responsus and Blue Kai and Maximizer. They've been doing the same thing over here aimed at this earned media opportunity. Yeah. And if anything, I think that every CEO, every CIO, every CMO would tell you they understand there's very clear, there's a lot of clarity that I can't advertise my way there. And I just can't get there by sending 300 promotional email and SMS campaigns, uh, you know, versus 200 last year. I can't promote my way there. I can't advertise my way there. If I want to influence customer experience, customer loyalty and relationship, yeah. and ultimately customer purchasing behavior, I got to not just advertise and promote to them. I got to get at what's called influencers, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Consumers, whether they're B2B consumers or B2C consumers, I am more and more being um, influenced and driven on who I listen to, yeah. who I respect and hold credible, and ultimately who I buy from based on people I trust. That's, that's called an influencer. Yeah, and whether that's a reporter, an academic, a social person, a blogger, a community leader, brands know I got to get to the influencers if I want to get to my customers. Yeah. And that's all about earn. So the opportunity to go repeat exactly what I did at Oracle Marketing Cloud for paid and owned, but do it over here and earned was simply too big an opportunity to pass up. Well, first of all, I love that I want to drill down on Cision and specifically and what you, your plans are there, but let's stay on this mega trend sure. for a second because I think you're hitting the nail on the head here because I think this is something that, you know, we actually, when we started SiliconANGLE Media uh, seven years ago, this was the premise of our business. Yep. We saw that the connected network That's right. of social uh, is fueling this new earned area where earned is truly earned, yet there's no real, website, it's no silver bullet. That's right. It's a distributed, sure is. tightly coupled network. And it, there's pockets of it. So you, the word influence isn't about the most followers, it's about the relationship of the connected consumer, you got it. who's also a consumer and a producer of content. Yeah. Their opinion it. there. And so this is all uh, kind of a new behavioral thing. Yeah. So you go back to, you know, the earned and, I mean, owned and paid and search and all that stuff. This is contextual and behavioral. Absolutely. It's really, that's two things. That's right. The behavior of the crowd. You got it. You can't look further than the Trump election to say, <laughs> whoa, who saw that coming? That's an example of an earned dynamic, I would say, that caused people to go, well, what the heck? Yeah, I, so, I should send him a letter for thanking him for making my point so uh, <laughs> so emphatically for me. Yeah, we're all gonna, exactly right. <laughs> a lot of people are going to suffer for that, and yeah. people crying in their wine in California, for sure, yep. a blue mm -hmm. state. But this brings up the dynamic, right? This is the mega trend that now this earned media component isn't just about ads. It's software. That's right. It's about software and networks. And with cloud computing there's an opportunity for people to participate in there. So so how how do you guys, um, I'm gonna rephrase it this way, how does customers, what, what's the current pain point? I mean, they, what's the top three? Yeah. I mean, obviously advertising, you know, I don't want to drive traffic to my site, that's an old mentality, but right. that's the only thing they can do right now, yeah, and get is. clicks. So again, I, I think it is getting at that, uh, at the risk of being repetitive, it is, okay, boy, if, if that's all I do is rely on the big monolithic web infrastructure I've developed, uh, the campaign engine that just keeps getting cheaper and cheaper, so I keep sending more and more, and okay, it's programmatic now, so I guess I can throw more at uh, Google and Facebook. I, I'm not saying those aren't important parts of the mix. Um, you, of course, need to continue, yeah. but they're declining in efficacy, right? So not only are they declining in efficacy while they increase in spend, the, cus the consumer, right, again, whether that's a B2B consumer or B2C, is becoming increasingly numb, don't view them as credible, don't view them as trustworthy. Yeah. Yet they've got these big lofty goals uh, in this new digital world where right, the, the, the fragmented influence is harder and harder to contain and, and they just flat out need to, they recognize that the thing that's probably going to be the most important going forward, which is solving this puzzle, yeah. is the thing they've de-invested in <laughs> the most, yeah. right? Uh, it's gone from the king of the hill 20 years ago to yeah. as a true second class citizen while they got all drunk on uh, paid advertising and <laughs> yeah. you know more e-commerce well, campaigns. Well, the role of the buyer is interesting. So let me just get your thoughts on this sure. because one of the things that we've observed at Silicon Angle in our business model is we do really, really well with our um, I'd say I don't know, call them advertised sponsors, if you will, because uh, we're very community driven yep. with the Cube, as you know, is that we have buy-in from not just the CMO, yeah. in some cases, just the head of communications. That's right. So the role of PR, public relations, is a communications function. So the thing about social is you have a dynamic of organic, and everyone knows organic is the cool, right? And yeah. Organic growth bottoms up. But the interesting thing is communication pros have a top-down command and control mentality. Yeah. So when you blend command and control with organic growth, you can actually have both now. You can. This seems to be the you new can. power base. That's right. The comms person, which was, hey, get the press release out there. 
go talk to 10 reporters is now a million people. Yep. The CMO would go That's to the right. agencies and spend a lot of dough on print ads and TV commercials. Yep. They have to work together. Well, and the chief communication officer is still the, 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 one of the nice things. You know, seven out of ten times they're reporting directly to the CMO. The other three times they're actually appear to the to the CMO and they report directly to the CEO. So it's not a de-empowered function. Um, it shouldn't. And, and, and it shouldn't be right. And then I think that the modern communication organization. I'll talk about who they are, and then I'll circle back on the pain point because there's some acute pain there that we're trying to address. Um, they don't look at it as just PR. Now, to be really clear, and I, I would like this on record too, the traditional journalist, reporter, media, never been more important, right? It's not like they've lacked. But even then, right, who that reporter is on that publication website versus the print versus the broadcast versus their blog versus their Twitter handle versus their Facebook page versus their Instagram account, right? Even that traditional reporter is nine different influences to nine different audiences and nine different media, right? So they haven't become less important. They've become far more fragmented. Reality. That's exactly right. And nailing that is 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 no trivial thing that's got to get done. They they um, they really are. They're, they're as digital and as modern and as social as everybody else. But then you also got to realize, boy, right, these communities are incredibly powerful. These, these mini bloggers have as much clout as the New York Times does in this particular area, right? These social followings, uh, these academics, these thought leaders, mm -hmm. the, the definition of a digital influencer has widened quite a bit above and beyond the core journalist. But, but don't forget that that person's really important. So, uh, and then you got the consumer influencers and their user generated content themselves, right? So the, the customer is their own influencer, uh, yeah. which is really interesting. And that's a B2B dynamic as well as a B2C dynamic. So that's the world we all of a sudden, you know, find ourselves in. But I think the modern day- The digital world that you're talking about isn't a B2B versus B2C, it's, no. it's digital. It's digital period. So it's one yeah. concept now. And, and, it's, and, and it's, no mo it's no longer digital communications or digital marketing. It's just communications and marketing in a digital world, yeah. right? And that's a that sounds simple. That's a pretty fundamental shift. Um, now let's go back into though the tools that they have. So they're, they're as savvy and as digital as their peers that are running commerce or paid advertising or the website. They've really been bereft of toolkits. So I'm going to give you an example. Uh, we, we work with an extremely large, one of the four largest uh, uh, beauty products companies in the world. Uh, and when they do a, a good new uh, product launch, right? Let's let's look at advertising. They will harness data. They will develop 30 different audiences, right? And they will go do discrete tonality, creative, offer, you name it, at 30 different, you know, so they'll do 30 different banner ads. They'll do the same thing with social audience. They'll do 40 different data-driven audiences that get discrete touch content. In email, they'll do 50 or 60, right? 50 or 60 different data-driven segments. Um, and even in the website, they'll say, hey, John's profile, that's profile seven, Kevin's profile, that's profile 12. You will see a completely different website than I will based on data-driven personalization, right? What are they doing in communications? One press release and one infographic goes to all 12,000 communication outlets, no data, no versioning, right, no nothing. So this concept of the right version of the content to the right audience at the right time, I'm, I'm putting, you know, in advertising and in commerce and the website, I'm talking to soccer moms versus sexy grandmas versus Wall Street women, very different for my beauty products. In communications, I'm talking to all of them the same. Which is kind of crazy because the influencers. It used to be a, be a labor driven market too. That's we used right. to call it arms and legs, right? Which so is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And the head and arms and legs, and a lot of people kind of reaching out. But now the, the trend <clears throat> is to have a much more SaaS. That's exactly right. And, and, and I don't have the platform to actually go do that, right? So uh, as far as some of the pain we're trying to provide now with our communication cloud, just like with the other marketing clouds, I don't have to, I can actually do data-driven, intelligent um, messaging and content delivery to the audience, to the influencers that get at the discrete audiences, just like I do the data-driven direct communication to the, audience, the end users themselves. Probably more importantly, I'll stick with my example for a sec, John, uh, that beauty company, right, Fortune 500 beauty company, they get Rachel, who is the head fashion reporter on the fashion section, newyorktimes.com, right? Rachel covered, uh, and Rachel embedded my press release or my infographic. Home run, pop the champagne, right? It's like, okay. But, well, there's 2 million people that went to that fa fashion section of NewYorkTimes.com today when she covered, right? How many of them actually read the content and picked it up? Don't know. How many of them actually engaged in it, read the infographic, clicked the video, clicked the links? Don't know. Who were they? From a demographic, psychographic, sociographic, right, behavioral? Don't know. And probably most importantly, 
what did they do after they read it? Did they go to the desired shopping cart or the right community page or back to the website? Or you know, did, was there any actual digital behavior driven from that uh, so bigger it's media a black push? hole of discovery data. The, or... It stops at, I got picked up by the reporter. Yeah. And I have no idea how many of the 2 million people were influenced, covered, engaged, right, et cetera, and no idea about the behavior that I took. So the link between the influencer, comms, and the end user has never been closed. That's a second part of the pain point that we really fix is now we are fixing the gap between the influencer and uh, and the end user. And you're going to see us call that the influencer graph, John. You'll see a you'll see a press release, mm -hmm. a targeted one that's data driven mm -hmm. and very rich media <laughs> go out around the influencer graph because if we can start saying, hey, John's my end user customer, now I know, right, quantitatively with data that I can optimize in, in real time, which influencers matter which reporters, which academics, which bloggers, in which channels, in which media, yeah. and which content actually- And people have different influence rankings up. in certain contexts. You, you got it. And all that's a black hole, we know it. We have no idea how to measure it, make it data-driven, make it contextual, and optimize it in real time with a digital platform so that this command and control CCO who's, who thinks this way now actually has his, his or her system of record to actually go execute this way. As, as Maslow Hargiev needs as that sounds, because the commerce paid and own guys have had this for a while, this is a this is like discovering fire here for the uh, chief communication officer because they've never had their data and tech enablement platform yeah. to do this the way the other guys have. So that's that's number two. And the number three, and I think this is really important, is we all know that communicate one, I need to measure and optimize the comms function the way I just talked about it. We all know that if done right, it amplifies the bejesus out of the owned and the paid too. Yeah. You shouldn't be thinking about them in silos, yeah. but there's no way to measure that if I did a really good job and earned, yeah. look at the impact it had and the efficacy on that massive paid budget. They're not mutually exclusive and, they're, and they're there's, a, there's a relationship between them because in social and in communities, yep. collaboration That's is exactly a core right. linchpin. It, it, it is, it, you cannot articulate just how important that is. And until tech vendors put the apps, the APIs, the data mm -hmm. and then the right the, the ID syncs together, you can't measure it, right? Mm -hmm. And as fundamental as that sounds, that's why what's happened over there in Adobe, Oracle, Salesforce land had to happen. And it's why what we're doing here in Cision Land has to happen so that not only can comms catch up, but comms can communicate in that data and identity. And play an active well. role in that too. An active role because and what's gonna happen role. is they're gonna realize, holy smokes, the paid performed here without the earned the paid performed here <laughs> with the earned and quite frankly the earned outperformed the paid yeah. right so and we're it's not going to be a participant too. role it's going to be a i'm going to resume my rightful place at the head of that uh you know the head of that triangle so in our second segment we're going to get more into decision and company yep. specific solution but we'll end it. this segment on kind of wrapping up the big mega trend obviously social and the technology and network effect of social combined with the data combined with the fact that comms communications That's right is now an active leader an important role in the creative mix That's right. of earned That's right. and integrating it with paid. That's so you right. can have a cohesive but decoupled programs. It's not silver bullet either way. No question. Rising tide floats all boat, but right. earned has been underdeveloped. Underdeveloped, underinvested in, under tech enabled, under data enabled, and really that's what it gets to is uh, the people in charge understand that they didn't quite have the data tech mm -hmm. tools to do it. Uh, the data, the tech tools are now available, and now the the, the industry's just got to kind of yeah. get up the sophistication curve. So, final question to end the segment is: um, um, Where's the progress bar on this sector? Or how early is it? First inning, bottom of the first, second inning, and two. There's always in these early adopter markets that certainly that you saw clearly yeah. left yeah. Oracle for it. But this is, and I agree by the way, is a great great opportunity. They're always the champions internally who see it too. Yeah. How, uh, where's the progress bar and what's the advice to the folks that are inside these companies who actually have the religion say, this is the future and have to communicate it to the rest of the company? I, I, I think, unfortunately, the, the thinking, uh, the thought leadership bar is probably in the third inning. They get it. Uh, the doing something about it and going from good thinking to good practitionership and execution is in Spring the training. first out, <laughs> the first out of the, fir the first pitch in the first inning, <laughs> you know, of the first game of the season, uh, we're, we're, we're literally at, at ground one. The good news is, though, is they're not going to try to go convince the CFO from a money or the CIO from a resource or the CEO from a strategy. Um, this whole, I keep saying this, this data, tech, and measurement transformation, mm -hmm. the, the corporation, no matter what the corporation is, invested in it in sales, look what happened. They invested in the service, look what happened. They invested in it and paid. 
look what happened. They've invested in it and owned. So the good news is, is while they are at the very, very, very beginning of the ball game, they are literally the last function inside the corporation to actually go do it. And they, don't have, a, they don't have evangelism around the benefit of this type of transformation. It's worked in every other area. So while they're at the very beginning, they don't have to convince anybody it's a good idea. Yeah. Everybody else that's down the hall and sits around the CEO's table has been through that transformation. So there's not that evangelism. It's just now his or her it's turn. It's operationalized and do some results. Put that's some exactly results right. on the table. And, and, it, and it's shown results in all these other lines of business. So there's not this fundamental disbelief that it won't show results in the communications line of business. Right. There's actually quite the opposite. There's heavy belief that it will because it has shown, uh, right, it has shown results in all these other lines of business. So yeah. in they some should cases, be able to move faster. In some cases, it's obvious, too. It's like, yeah. okay, we got to do this. Yeah. They should be able to move faster. Yeah. This, this caterpillar should turn into a butterfly really fast because everybody's thinking about it, the tech's in place, yeah. and it's worked in other places. But we are really, really, really at the very beginning. It's exciting. Kevin yeah. Ackroyd, CEO of Cisioneer, inside our studio talking about the landscape of really digital changing and how earned media, blogs and folks like Silicon Angle and others who are actually producing original content yep. and engaging audiences now have an opportunity to convert over and this new market shift going on, big mega trend. We're back with segment two, uh, talking about the, the company and their solution and technology. It'd be interesting to get that perspective. Kevin, thanks for joining us here in the Palace. Thanks for watching. Thank you.